Building your sounds using a graphic interface model like in Gig Performer 5's wiring view has many advantages for live performers over a traditional channel strip model. In today's video, I'm gonna show you several real world examples of how building patches using this graphic interface model makes creating and managing your sounds easier and more intuitive. Let's have a look. Reason number one, better audio and MIDI signal flow overview. Right now on the screen, I have a gig file open that I use to play some worship services. And when I play, immediately you can see exactly where signal is coming. At the very top, you'll see my MIDI, and every time I hit a key, those wires will light up. And right below that, you can see where the audio is lighting up. Not only does this let me know what's happening in the moment, but if I need to go back later and change things, it's very easy for me to see if there are any errors or where the actual device is that I want to adjust. Now, in addition to that, the wiring view also offers very clear color coding. So if I know that orange represents a MIDI in block or a MIDI in device, I will know right away, hey, this is MIDI. And if I see green, I'm gonna know right away that I'm looking at some sort of a virtual instrument. Black is gonna indicate that that device is built in with Gig Performer, and in this case, it is a simple gain and balance knob. Blue represents audio effects, and these light gray blocks show that it is going to and from the global rack space. So it's really easy for me to see at a glance exactly what is going on. Now, just for comparison, I'm going to open up the same exact setup inside of Ableton Live. Okay, so here's this same setup inside of Ableton. And so while I'm achieving much the same thing, if I were to come in here a long time after I created it, or even in a hot moment where something is going wrong and I need to quickly fix it, I need to actually remember what I did. And I would be willing to bet that when you look at this, unless you are familiar with how Ableton works, you're not actually going to know what I did. So having that graphic interface is a really helpful way to know exactly what's there so you can go in and make changes or troubleshoot something that's going on. Reason number two, multi-output devices are way easier to use. When you're working in a graphic interface and you bring in a device that has multiple audio outputs, you can see every output. So in this example here, I've got Cherry Audio's CR78. And when I load this in, right away I can see Channels one and two are left and right, and then I've got my bass drum, left and right, snare, left and right, rim shot, left and right, and so it's really easy for me to just go in here and grab only the things that I need. So for example, if I want just my kick drum, and maybe I want just snare added to that, I can do so really easily just looking and seeing what's happening and interacting with it in a graphic interface. Now, in addition to that, it creates a really easy way for us to insert effects. Now, of course, this can be done using a channel strip, but in this model, have a look at what I can do. So I'm gonna bring in a tape echo device. And when I do, I can easily insert it right in the path that I want to isolate just that one sound. And now I kind of have a cool effect just on that snare drum. Doing the same thing in Ableton Live would require multiple channel strips. So when I bring in my multi-output device here, by default, you're gonna see everything is just on one channel. And if I wanna have access to those other channels, what I need to do is actually go into the audio channels here and choose my input from this channel and then not from post mixer, but from these individually. So it's absolutely possible, but in order for me to have access to all of those things, I would need a single channel strip for each and every one of those particular audio outputs. Reason number three, multi-timbral instruments are way easier to work with. So you'll see loaded into Gig Performer right now, I have a multi-output and multi-timbral device. Um, piano, 
pads, and strings. And by default, in contact, each instrument that's added comes in on its own channel. So when I go to play sounds, right now you'll see I'm just getting piano, even though there are two other instruments inside of uh, this device. Now, if I wanna hear all of these sounds as one big layer, there are several ways for me to do it inside of Gig Performer, but the easiest way is for me to just create two more MIDI in blocks. And I can wire those straight into this instrument. And then I can say, hey, I want channel one to go to channel two. And I want channel one to go to channel three. And now when I play, I'm gonna get all of those sounds flowing at the same time. Now, in addition to that, the advantage of this MIDI in block is that I could also set individual ranges for each part of that multi-timbral instrument just by coming in here and choosing learn, and I can pick my lowest and my highest. And now that instrument on channel two will only respond to this range. And outside of that range, it will not respond. I can also set custom velocity curves for each instrument on a one-off basis. So if they respond differently to touch as you move across the keyboard, you can come in and draw a custom curve to compensate for that. So using multi-timbral instruments, not only as fast and easy to set up, but then you get customized detail control over exactly how each sound performs when you're playing. Let's have a look at how to do this in another very popular piece of live performance software. Okay, so here I am inside of another very popular live performance software, and I have loaded in the exact same uh, multi-timbral patch here. So I've got my piano on channel one, my analog dreams on channel two, and my strings on channel three. And you'll hear when I press a key, just piano. And that of course is because that piano is coming in on channel one and the other instruments therefore not receiving those messages. And so the way that we go about doing this here is actually quite different because um, there are no wires. So what needs to be done is we need to create an alias for as many instruments inside our multi-timbral instrument as we have. So in this case, we'll need two additional ones. So you can come up here and choose edit paste as alias, and I'm gonna do that two times. Now you'll see when I do that, I've got these three lines here rather than one, but still just piano. Um, and that is because it is currently set to just receive MIDI um, from the keyboard itself. And we have to actually set it to be multi-timbral by going into the MIDI input and then choosing multi-timbral. And we'll set keyboard one to channel one and we'll do none and none. And then I'll have to go to my second one here and the same MIDI input, but instead we need to go to multi-timbral and we'll set the keyboard one to channel two and here to channel three. Okay, so now you'll hear I've got all three of those set up. So of course I could probably just go in and, oh wait, because these are aliases, I cannot alter the outputs individually from this point. In order to actually do that, I have to come in here and hit this plus sign. Um, and I have to do that so that I have control over them individually. And at this point, now I have set up those uh, multiple outputs so that I can have each of them going through on a different channel. So it is possible, but everything is a bit more hidden and you really have to go through menus to get everything set up as opposed to in the graphic interface model, just connecting uh, MIDI blocks to your instrument and resetting the MIDI channel. Reason number four, flexible audio paths and parallel processing. Right now you'll see I have a simple piano patch and this piano is running first through a distortion. Then on one side, it's going through a reverb with a little bit of compression. And on the other side, it's going through some tape echo and the kilohertz phaser. Both of these effects are from Cherry Audio, by the way. So if you are interested in checking out their products, you can look below and Cherry Audio are our partners. So special thanks to them. Gig Performer license holders do get 10% off on the synth stack bundle. So here's what this patch sounds like. <laughs> Thank you. 
So kind of a wacky and wonky patch and creating this inside of a channel strip model would actually be totally doable, no problems at all. But let's say I want to have this echo be a bit more prominent. And I want to run that through the compressor, but combine it with the signal from the reverb. Getting this set up inside of a channel strip model would actually be quite challenging, and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so let me show you how we would have to set this up in order to do it. So essentially what would have to happen is I would need to create two more buses. So I'll go ahead and create this first one. And I'm gonna send everything here, disable this output. I actually should set this to zero. Move the compressor over here. Then I'll need to create another bus and move the phaser over here. Send my signal. Then I could send some of the signal from my echo into this compressor by accessing it through the send, which would be to aux 10. So, absolutely possible to do. However, when you come in through here, you're doing a lot of extra channel strip creation and a lot of jumping through hoops just to make something that is really simple in a graphic interface model possible. Reason number five, controlling one sound multiple ways. There are so many examples of this, but one of them that I could think of was from Rock With You by Michael Jackson. And in this tune, there is an intro that has strings, but I also want to access the strings later, and I need to do so with my left hand. So for the end of the intro, there's still an E piano part, but there's also this string room. And then we go through our verse. But when we finally get to the pre-chorus, we have those hits. And what I really want to happen there is I want to be able to have the strings be, be doubling me. I want to hear the, um, but I want to hear it on those strings and I'm just out of hands. So what you can do using this graphic interface model is actually have multiple MIDI in blocks. So for the verse, I'm using this string run MIDI in block, which just sets a specific range and Here's a pro tip. I'm also using this MIDI in block, which actually just receives sustain pedal messages. And that's because inside of contact, when it receives a sustain pedal message, it produces staccato, which I want for the beginning. But later, when I have those uh, doubling the melody part, I actually want that to disappear. So I can simply block the pedal messages um, by turning this, bypassing this plugin. So I have this for my first section. And I go through my e-piano part. And then when I switch to my pre-chorus, I have a separate set of MIDI in blocks plus a MIDI chord maker. And the result is I have this sound that makes it really easy for me to play. the left hand part and trigger the strings. And I'm doing that all within MIDI Chord Maker, which you can hear more about in the video linked in the description below. But because of the graphic interface model, it's easy for me to simply drag things where I want them and I can turn them on and off using widgets. Another cool thing, if I want this in octaves, I can just add another wire. And then when I play it, I get an even larger octave sound really easily just by connecting blocks with wires. 
Reason number six, control one sound from two different instruments. I see this happen all the time. Somebody may want to be able to play a sound on two different parts of their keyboard, or perhaps they're actually using a wireless guitar for certain sections of a song, or another bandmate plays certain parts, and you really only need one VST, but you want to be able to access it from two different places. Well, this is done really simply in Gig Performer. You can just have a MIDI in block for each one of your instruments. So I've got this MIDI in block here, which is currently set to my SL Studio, and I can come in here and just set this to my other device. Now, I have access to this from both of my MIDI controllers, really simple and really quick. This is actually significantly more challenging to do in other softwares. So for example, here I am inside of Ableton and I've got my Blue 3 organ still set to this SL Studio. And if I hit the keys on my other keyboard, I actually don't get any sound. So in order for me to do that, I would have to select it and then send that information to another channel strip. Make sure it's set to monitor. And so now I need two separate channel strips to accomplish the same task. Here are a few more incidental reasons why the graphic interface is faster and easier to manage over time with a graphic interface rather than a channel strip interface. The first is Ripcord. Ripcord is a really powerful tool for creating chords, but you'll notice when I drag Ripcord into Ableton, it turns into an audio track, which means if I wanna take advantage of that, I need to set my inputs from my MIDI channel to be the actual device itself rather than from my keyboard. So if I also want to control it from my keyboard, then I need an additional channel inside of Ableton to receive MIDI from my keyboard and send that out to my organ. So this becomes really challenging to scale over time if you're wanting to use Ripcord. However, inside of Gig Performer, you can route Ripcord and have as many instances of Ripcord as you would like simply by connecting the MIDI output. So I could go to a single instrument if I desired, or I could also route that straight through to a multi timbral instrument like from before. And since this is a graphic interface, I could also go ahead and route MIDI from this same output through these MIDI channel constrainers to get audio coming through on every single one of those instruments. Now, of course, that's not the only way we could go about doing it. I could also just create a separate MIDI in block, which I'll show you here. And I could route a separate instance of Ripcord through MIDI Rechannelizer. and just also route channel one to all three channels, just like that. So it makes it really easy to work with Ripcord because I can have as many different routings of the device that I would like. Now you might be thinking about side chaining. Is it easy to side chain in Gig Performer? It's actually extremely easy to side chain inside of Gig Performer. And let me show you how this works. Here I have a really simple eight voice pad. If I want to have that side chained, all I need is a compressor that supports side chaining. So I have the M compressor by Melda, and you'll see if I mouse over the inputs, I've got this side chain section. So if I route my kick drum through this channels one and two, that is a side chain, um, I can then easily set that up by enabling or disabling side chain. So when I play, you'll see I've got my uh, kick drum coming through here. And if I enable this, when I play my chord, I get my side chain effect. So even in this case, there is no bussing or crazy routing that's necessary. I can simply connect to the side chain input inside of Gig Performer, make sure that my compressor is set to support side chaining and I am good to go. 
At Gig Performer, we believe that you shouldn't have to be a full-on audio engineer to create great sound. You should be able to simply connect your instruments and your effects together with wires to create something that makes sense for you so you can get past the programming and on to what really matters, which is the playing. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time at Gig Performer.